Welcome to the Deli Dixon's channel. Today I'm going to be talking about an animated show from Disney, What If. Only one episode has come out. I got a chance to watch it, so instead of doing a wait till it comes out type podcast, I'll do surface thoughts on the episodes as they come out, or I'll try. Now, What If goes way back for me as a kid. Growing up, the concept of what if in the comics has always fascinated me. I, I could remember it in the first comics that I ever picked up in that it was weird. It was out of place and it was characters doing and being things you weren't expecting them to be. And they always had a little story about where the timeline split and why it's an alternate universe. And it was narrated and started by a being called the Watcher. And they're a race of beings, uh, you know, billions of years old who have a non-interference clause. And they just watch. And the theme was he would tell a story of, you know, what happened with the Hulk? What if the Hulk? What if Captain America? So on and so forth with all the heroes. And there are thousands. The DC equivalent would probably be Elseworlds. And they have their own multiversal concepts and um, events. But this is Marvel's What If, and I was um, a little um, hesitant about it. I just fell in love with MODOK, and knowing that this came out and I got an opportunity to watch it, I was like, oh, I don't know if I want to. I usually like to wait for everything to be put out and watch it all, because doing one episode at a time. But this is perfect for because if I'm correct, each episode will be a standalone story. It'll just be a What If. So I think that's a great way to do one of these, or start doing, anyway, episode-to-episode episode podcasts. Because I could see me watching this TV show, like the start of something, and going, oh, and then every episode, you know, changing. And I guess that could be a journey on its own. So I don't usually give too many spoilers and plot reveals, but this is centered on Captain America, or should I say, what if, and Steve Rogers is not the one who gets the uh, super soldier serum. It's Peggy Carter. I really enjoyed it, so I'll say right off the bat, there's great everything to this, uh, animation, voice, and really a good blend of the animation where they were able to keep a momentum in the camera angles. It really gave you a good feel for the show, and it matched what was going on on the screen. Even when they tried to do their little uh, montages here and there, it actually worked in this form. So I'll say that right off the bat. I really liked it. Borderline love it. And one thing annoyed me right off the bat, so I'll get that out of the way. And it's a nitpick annoyance because I'm such a nerd with these comic book stuff. When I heard the narration of The Watcher, I, 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 I liked the voice. And I actually know who it is because I watched uh, Westworld and you can recognize his voice. But when they revealed the Watcher, I got pissed. So in the comics, the Watchers are a skinny, tall, big headed being, pale, usually bald, big uh, collar. And this showed him as what you would consider eternity <laughs> in Marvel Comics. Now, this is so nerdy. But eternity is the being who's the. Um, you know, his body contains the universe. And he's a conceptual entity that represents the universe. And he's shown to be stars and, and you know, universes in his outline of a uh, being. This did that, and right away I was like, what is, you know, I thought it was a little weird. I wanted to see the Watcher and all his nerdy glory. I guess it would have looked weird, maybe. I don't know, but that was the first thing, and it's just a little nitpick that I'm making fun of, but I, I don't know. It just bothered me. And the other thing I was so little surprised at was how heavy they went with the, oh, it's a bad time for women thing. And I guess they had to do it. But I found myself going, you know, I would, you know, I don't know how long these things are because I don't know. It's my first, you know, I'm watching. I didn't know it was only, you know, if it's 30 minutes or each one thing. And as I'm going, wait, I want to be wrapped up in the cartoon right now. And it was a little bit of a, blend of what maybe is a trend going on they're gonna keep some themes in the show and you know some of the episodes and it's right it's appropriate for the time it will work but i thought there would be more 
campiness right off the bat and more I'm a superhero type feeling to it. And I guess that's my balance of the show is I just watched it and I turned on the mic. So again, the animation is top notch. I really liked it. I liked the voice acting and the way the movement was on the camera. And it was, um, I'm trying to think of, I think there was a Batman animated. Well, there's so many, right? There's fucking thousands of them, I think. But there was a Batman animated uh, movie type thing that I really enjoyed the concept of. This gave me that feeling. A little bit of anime, a little bit of what made me love, um, you know, X-Men and Batman and Spider-Man cartoons. Is that essence is still there, but they hype it up. Uh, like I said, there's a real feel for the momentum and power. Um, cutting angles for super heroic feats, so to say. Now, it stars um, basically as the character is Peggy Carter, but since Steve Rogers didn't get it, you do find out that uh, because of a decision that Peggy Carter makes, Steve Rogers is shot and injured, and the equipment is malfunctioning. So there's no one to do the test, so she jumps in and she gets the super soul soldier serum but she becomes but steve rogers survives and this was another thing i kind of rolled my eyes at because i knew what they were going to do in a way but steve rogers is um in in the cartoon is more than just a agent who's uh sidelined and has to um you know Watch my father or someone he loves or cares about is risking their life. It's not that type of thing. And maybe I'll do a little quick thing at the end um, and talk about maybe spoilers as they do in this fucking type of thing. I guess I really like the um, a feel of it. And I could see this being something that could really catch on. Or what if it's a little different slant on what you actually know, what you saw. But I could see it being really confusing too. I could totally see someone starting to rant right now. Oh, what is Peggy? What are they doing? They're making a female Captain America. This is ridiculous. Uh, you know, just like they did with um, Steven Spielberg. He takes a picture with the tricer Triceratops. That's like sick in the movie. And people are like, you know, hunting. Like, that's just crazy. Anyway, I could see it happen. And I hear they're going to put a lot of real star, like the star's voices in. I wouldn't be surprised if um, this becomes a thing that they do. And look, when the pandemic started and all this was uh, up in the air, I was really hesitant. You know, I don't want to, I'm a nerdy fanboy and I try to be aware of my biases and stuff. When I hear what if, I go, the nerd in me just wants to love it. So I guess, like I said, my nitpicks are if the watcher doesn't look like the watcher, but that's so silly. And I was, Surprised at the how heavy it was on the female thing right off the bat. So, but it doesn't ruin it. I loved it. Uh, a friend of mine said, you know, he could see this being a whole show. It's a whole animated movie. I could see it also. You could have put, you could have ended this right with the Avengers for me. You could have like, you know, what they kind of do. And uh, I'll talk about that in a second. So, on the whole, I really like it. I'm so interested in it. I'm a little upset about the watcher, but that's silly. And uh, I guess a theme that I didn't expect them to do so much, but it's appropriate for the time. And I'll get into a little spoiler section now. So I guess this is where I, I'm not going to fucking do it, but I guess you put up the thing that says spoilers. Well, here's my voice saying spoilers. So Steve Rogers becomes the Hydra Smasher, and he's a huge Iron Man Model 1 character, because Tony Stark gets the Terrasect, and he creates this invincible Iron Man suit. It becomes a plot device of the show, because um, he's taking, you think he's dead, which I knew they were going to do. It was, was going to make the opposite type thing. And they you find out he's imprisoned, and they've got the Iron Man suit, Red Skull's gonna open a portal and bring in the Hydra monster that grows and will take over the world with its 
it's uh, you know open portal type monster comes out and i was a little surprised at that but when you but the journey was pretty good and so many animation is so good with like i said this theming it in and i kind of liked it um they do the uh bait and switch a little bit with uh you know he's steve rogers is dead but i guess that's really really not much to say in a 30 minute cartoon for spoilers but it's there and there's a lot to like and what I, i'm not sure if they have a schedule like do they have a list already of like the next episodes because i didn't find one i mean this is just me like i said i have a moment throw on the mic but it looks like only episode one what if captain carter were the first avenger and it's written by ac bradley i don't know i didn't say this shit from the beginning but um Am I supposed to give like some credit here? You know, based on Marvel Comics, directed by Brian Andrews. Jeffrey Wright is the voice, the main voice. Well, uh, Haley Atwell. Looks like they got the actors. That's pretty cool. So you're looking at the. Uh, Haley Elizabeth Atwell, who plays Peggy Carter, is the voice. Sebastian Stan is Bucky Barnes. That's ex excellent. Howard Stark. You know, they, they get, it's a cool way to grab everybody in and get voice acting done. Uh, like I was saying, because I'm hothead, distracted very easily. The pandemic, you know, we didn't expect this, but we have ways of doing shows where, you know, you don't have to take too many risks. Go do your voice acting, get the animators together. Now, this could destroy your fucking show. As I don't think it's destroyed, but there's a whole hoopla going over He Man and Masters of the Universe. Well, actually, no, it's not He Man and Masters of the Universe. Any case, I just wanted to do a quick thing. What if Peggy Carter was the first Avenger, the first episode of Marvel's animated show? I really like it, borderline on love, but I have a couple of nitpicks. I said a couple of those, you know, the major spoiler in it. And, oh, so one of the last spoilers is to stop the creature, she pushes it through with um, the Hydra Smash and armor and it depowers, but she gets sucked into the portal with the creature. At the end, she gets spit out, and 70 years later, so she wasn't frozen in ice. She was just time dilated from the portal from her view when she popped out you know minutes might have gone by and nick fury's there waiting for her but that was excellent you know kind of primes that now i'm wondering about one other thing before i end this will they go back like could something be so good so riveting that they actually go back so could you see season two the first Avenger, Peggy Carter, and it continues that story. Like, will they? Because I could see that. Like, you could see this being an engine for ideas. Now, this could be a concept recently, you know, like when you think of the movie called uh, What Just Came Out, Suicide Squad, you know, use obscure characters, like that type of thing. This might even be, in a way, better. You got an animated show. You don't need on, you know, with the pandemic and stuff. You're getting the actors to do it. Why not? It's done the quality as well. We'll see where this goes. So thank you for joining me. I'll try to do this weekly for the show. I don't really normally do this. Because, you know, I'm a pothead. And I, you know, try to, you know, segment my time. But anyway, what if? Episode 1. I really enjoyed it. Check it out. Give it a shot. I think for the most part, it's, it'll be enjoyable for everybody. It's really uh, some great action in there mixed in it's, it's really good all right everybody be well and i'll talk to you all next time take care